Tonight, I will be talking to you guys about my life story. Oh, what is up, people? Yo, yo what up, people? You already know who it is. It's Wally Gordon bringing you another video. Today, we are talking about my life. Why are we talking about my life? Let me. I'm going to get into that real quick before I start getting into my actual life story. And obviously, I haven't had a long life story because I'm just not that old. I'm 15, about to turn 16 in about six months. That's about it. <laughs> so, don't judge if it's not perfect. But I'll have probably more detail than usual because, again, with the shorter life thing... I have let I have more time to explain more. So, but why I'm getting into this is I've been watching my shows, Vampire Diaries, Supernatural, all that. And it got me thinking, you know, these guys are immortal. But they had a life before they became immortal. So, why not share it with mine? Or another thing I thought about was they're immortal. They've learned not to th take things for granted because they're always like they're guaranteed tomorrow. But humans like us, no one's promised. Tomorrow is not promised to no one. Don't mind my grammar on that double negative, whatever. <laughs> but it's got you thinking, appreciate what you have. And just always live life like it's your last. Live today like it's your last. Okay, none of that sentimental crap now. Actually, it'll be sentimental soon. But here we go. I was born... This Okay, hold on. Before I start it... Not before I start it. I'm just going to prelapse. The birth of Wiley Gordon. I was born September 3rd, 2002, to the parents of Jennifer Gordon and Charles Wiley Gordon II. My full name is Charles Wiley Gordon III. I was born in the Cottonwood Hospital, which is no longer there. It has been since torn down and rebuilt with a new hospital. So I can I can never get the experience of going back and visiting my birth room like I guess some people do. Whatever. I was raised in a small town of Magna, Utah. It's about 7.4 square miles and has a population of about 26,000 people. And things were good when I was a baby. At least for me, I was fed, had clothes, had a house, shelter. That's all I needed when I was a baby. But as I got older, I started to realize more. My parents are working two jobs to try to get some money to have to let me have a great life. My parents are doing everything in their power to make it better for me. And I was a little turd. Freaking, I'm not even joking. Like, people say they were bad children. I was just, I wasn't that bad of a child. I'm not like a delinquent or anything. But sometimes I like to feel like I'm the reason my parents got divorced. Which every, all the parents say, no, no, don't, never say that to yourself. It's not true. Yeah, I'm not going to differ because I don't know for a fact. But I had thought for a while it was my fault. So, we come to me about eight years old. No, let's no, let's reel it back real quick. No, I don't have to go eight years old yet. I start daycare, okay? At this play, it's Magna Rec Center. Has a daycare where my mom goes and works out. Go there, have like a little school. 
with my parents fighting at home and trouble at home, I kind of got as a bad child. I don't know why I keep quoting. But my te- my teacher didn't really like me. I got I was always sitting in the office, always not being able to go on field trips. Never got special privileges because I was a bad kid for what was happening at my house. And I had felt like I couldn't express myself at my house, so I'd have to act out in school. So, long story short, I got expelled from my first daycare and then moved on my second daycare. My second daycare, I was there maybe until I was about eight, which is weird. (laughs) But... <clears throat> there till I was about eight, and it was out. It was in West Valley, which is the neighboring city. Um, it was weird. It was the first time I'd ever gone. I had one person that went to my school with me at the daycare. I'd never had friends that lived by me before. And really, I didn't, because this was, I was getting to be about seven-ish. Not when I moved to that daycare, but when I started, you know, realizing and getting all the friends and stuff. But I never had friends live by me. Because I had always lived miles away, or whatever. And I was, or I was the delinquent that just didn't care about people and know about friends or whatever. Especially not friends. <laughs> but I went to a school called Monticello Academy from kindergarten to third grade. In the third grade, out of a 180-day school year, I got suspended for a total of 90. And you think, well, why didn't they expel you before? Because they thought I had a chance. And how do you say, well, 90? How is that even possible? Go to school for two days, do something bad on the second... Get it suspended for two days. Come back at the sec. To come back two days. Bad day on second. Yeah, to have the entire year. But down the hall from my third grade class was my six. There was a sixth grade teacher. Uh, his name was Mister Lennox. He would take me into his classroom. He was a good teacher. He would make me write sentences, 100 sentences of what I did. I I hated that. <laughs> Still do. It hurts my hand. But whenever I'd have to go sit in the hall, he was right down the hall. Like So his door like his door would be down here in the hall, and mine was down here on the side. So he'd always see me in the hall. And he'd always take me in his class. And he was a science teacher, so I got to learn pretty good. About, got to learn science pretty well like electricity and all that how it worked um comes a show i got expelled at the end of my third grade year on the very last day of school the reason i hold a grudge on that is you know how elementary schools had that last day of school party in the class was eating a cupcake and i had to go to the office and when I come back, my cupcake was gone. I, no, actually, I didn't even get to go back to my class. The freaking principal got my stuff for me and didn't grab my cupcake. So I never got my cupcake, and I was triggered. About that time, my parents got divorced, and I moved to North Salt Lake. North Salt Lake was my first time I'd ever gone to public school. Before, I'd had to wear a uniform. Maroon or white shirt with black or tan slacks. Whatever. But I moved to New- North Salt Lake in the middle of my third grade year. So I was even worse when my parents had got divorced. And I was kind of living in between two lives going to one school. And... After that year, my dad said, you know what? You're going to go to the school right down the street. That would be Foxboro Elementary. My first public school was in fourth grade. 
when I like when I talk about this, this is when I started to have friends that actually lived in my neighborhood. And so I wasn't developed socially enough to deal with that. And I always thought, oh, it's so cool. Like you can just you can be my friend just because you live in my neighborhood. That got me to hanging out with not good people. Yes, it's fourth grade, fifth grade, but it, they weren't good influences on me. Um, so fourth grade, I had one friend that I'd hang out with constantly. His name was Braxton. Not going to disclose last name because... Because. <laughs> His name was Braxton. I'd hang out with him. He was my best friend, fourth grade. Okay, it always stand up for him if he was getting picked on and everything, and we we're good buds. Then this kid Gunner moves in fifth grade. First time I met him, he was in my class. Oh boy, had I had a treat! I had no idea, and I had no intention of ever talking to this guy. But one day, me and Braxton were walking down to the pool in my little uh, complex, whatever. And here comes Gunner riding in on his BMX bike. I'd never seen a BMX bike before that. Me and uh, Braxton had mountain bikes. And comes riding in. He's got like this airsoft gun. He starts like shooting at our feet. We're all jumping around. And I was like, hey. No, not even running after him. I was just like, oh, crap. And I ran, we ran into my house. Well, next day at school, we, I was like, yo, what's up? You know, I saw the, you had that airsoft gun and that BMX bike. That's kind of cool. And he's like, yeah, I got all this. I got cool stuff. You know, my dad's, he, my dad's got nice stuff. He likes fishing and stuff and lets me kind of do whatever I want. And I said, that's cool. I'm kind of like that too. Mind that I would always, I was always home alone because my dad still had to work because it was just me and him. So I almost always had the house alone. And I started hanging out with Gunner, stopped talking to Braxton because Gunner kind of told me to. Gunner told me Braxton's weird. Don't talk to him. So I didn't. I don't know if that was a good decision in my life or not, but to this day, I haven't talked to Braxton, Braxton since fifth grade. And so I get pretty close with Gunner's family. You know, I know his dad, everything, brother. We're all good friends, you know. Then my dad gets a girlfriend, some chick that he went to high school to not high school, elementary school with, which is even, that's kind of weird, but whatever. And I always lived down the street from him or whatever, but she lived in Vegas. So now every weekend he'd start going down to Vegas and every other weekend that I was with him and not my mom, I would have to go too. He'd drag me along. Because he didn't think I could provide for myself. By this time, I could cook anything I wanted to. I knew how to raise myself. Because I basically had to. I had to grow up fast. Or basically die trying. And... Years later, it was 6th grade, okay? My dad takes me to dinner. He says... You know... I'm going to ask her to move in with me. And I was like, why? We're good with me and you. He's like, we're, we're going to have a baby. And I said, what? And that's where my little brother comes in. And this is the middle of sixth grade. I just found friends. I'm kind of getting the hang of this whole friends situation. Have friends that live outside of my neighborhood now. And boom, I have to move to a house. Move new house, new city, Kaysville, this house. And that basically rips all those friendships apart. 
I kind of I have a streak with Gunner on Snapchat every once in a while. It'll go to like seven, and then he won't respond, but he'll still open them, but he won't say anything. And then he'll come back and he'll start responding again, and it'll stop. It's on and off. It's just not good. And so I would go into school every morning at 6 a.m. because my dad had to drive to work. And he dropped me off at the school. And I would walk over to Gunner's house because by this time his dad had given me a key to the house. Because I told him my situation. I told him my dad drops me off at 6 a.m. and picks me up at 6 at night from the Maverick up the street because he has to work 12-hour shifts a day. Every day except weekends. So every weekday, 12-hour shifts. And he gave, he let me have a key. And every morning, I'd walk over to Gunner's house in the morning. He had a bunk bed, which was cool to me. I'd never seen a bunk bed before. And every morning, I'd cr crawl up on the top bunk, lay up there, and just pass back out. And me and Gunner became brother, like metaphorical brothers like that. And we got real close, like, good friends. I knew everything about him, and he knew everything about me. And that continued on for about the rest of sixth grade. And then, his dad passed away. And this hit me and him hard. Because his grandma that he lived with and his dad was living there too... She didn't really like me. Like she didn't hate me because her dad because his dad liked me and he liked me, so she wasn't gonna ruin it, but she hadn't really been a fan. And she made me give me like she made me give my key back and I wasn't gonna fight with her. It's her house. So I did. Now every and then every morning after that. I had no place to go from 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. Because school started at 8. Because it's elementary school. So I would start, you know, start sleeping on the playground or sleeping on the bike racks. Every, every morning, I kind of looked like slightly homeless. Because I'd be chilling there until 6 to 6 every night, every day. After school, I would start. I would hang out with Gunner though, because after school we have we had class together, and it kind of worked out that I'd just go home with him. But didn't work out perfect because some days he had stuff to do, and then I there I was stuck sitting on the bike racks for hours, and. So well, I could go. I couldn't go home because it wasn't our house anymore. So then, end of sixth grade rolls around. My dad basically picks me up and says, "Let's go." I didn't get a summer with my friends because we had to do stuff. We had to put the house together. Seventh grade comes, Fairfield Junior High, another public school. I'm back. I haven't gone to private school since. And I'm back where I started in fourth grade. I'm the new kid. I just moved here. I have no friends. And I'm looking for approval from anybody. So, with that being said, I... First day, I found friends that weren't good friends they didn't care those are the friends you know those nice people that are like hey you know what's up how you doing and that instantly made me think i was that they were my friend which threw me it threw me bad threw me bad okay didn't lead me good to places eighth grade comes around i know people i know people in my grade i know people who don't like me and people who do you're always going to have people who don't like you. Just live with it. It's They're not going away. And I tried to build this crew. I started to build this friends crew. So this is when Dade moved in. 
Dade moved to town, 8th grade, and he clicked with all of us. So he was in our group instantly. Brandon, Dade, all of them. And that's how me and Dade and Brandon's friendship ceased to now it is. We just hung out all in ninth grade. Honestly, I'd never hung out with Dade and Brandon at all until since ninth till ninth grade year, the last day of ninth grade. Like those after school parties on the last day of school. And we just hung out at his house and instantly we were all good best friends. And we haven't stopped since. We don't hang out all that often. It's because we have school. We have priorities, but we hang out when we can. And ninth grade comes around, and this is when I start dating chicks. And I met this girl, dated her for six months. And then we broke up, and I was a mess. I never recovered after that still. It's ninth grade. I'm in 10th grade. It was last year. Don't. It's nothing big. I dated her for six months. And I really haven't had a meaningful relationship since. Every girlfriend I've had from then on has been a week, three days, at you know, max week or two. But nothing compared to even a month or six. And that threw my social, like, I thought I was pretty good at socializing now. Then we break up and I just fall looking for approval from anyone again. Then I move here this year and... Same thing. I had some friends from Fairfield, but not very many because most of the kids that all my friends go to Layton. Every one of my crew, Matt, Christian, Dade, Brandon, the girl, all of them go to freaking Layton. Not hating on Layton. I'm just hating that my friends go to Layton. And... I came here, and again, I met new friends because I had classes. I meet people in class because I kind of have to. And then I found YouTube, and YouTube let me express my feelings and how I... Let me express me to everyone else and let people like me for me instead of me having to be someone else for other people's approval. And that's where we are today. I didn't get into like wrestling or my friendship relationships that have ended and gone off and everything. That might be for another day. But as of right now, guys, I'm caught up with my life. And with that being said, y'all, I will see y'all tomorrow because you already know we do this every single day of the year because you guys keep my spirits up when I might be feeling low. Be different. Embrace your differences. Respect yourself. Respect others. Embrace all your... Embrace yourself. Just... Just rock and roll. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Peace out.